I extend a hearty welcome on behalf of philosophy family to all the learned participants of our country and abroad. I extend my welcome to all the senior professors like Professor Onji sir, Professor uh, Srinivasan sir, Professor Bundaban sir, and uh, all others to be associated with this uh, virtual academic platform of uh, philosophy family. So today, I specially welcome to Professor Dr. Anup Rai sir, uh, who has, uh, has given his consent to be the speaker of today's webinar. I welcome Professor Anup Rai sir. Today, his topic is faith in the suspension of disbelief. It is a very good topic and everybody will be benefited out of this uh, talk. And... Uh, uh, before inviting Professor Anup Raisai to this webinar, it's my pride privilege to speak a few words on his academic journey. And you know, Pra Dr. Anup Raisai is, is the formal associate professor of philosophy who has uh, served 30 years in different government aided colleges of Odisha. Uh, he retired in the year 1918 and Professor Anup was also the visiting professor in Rebensa University. Professor Anup is very popular to philosophy family. Uh, he has also uh, patronized the different activities of philosophy family. Uh, professor Anup did his MA um, from Utkala University and PhD from B.R. Ambedkar University, Bihar, on the topic logic of, logic of faith. So today, his topic, faith is the suspension of uh, disbelief, may be part of his, uh, his doctoral thesis. And it is a pride privilege to listen to this topic. Uh, and uh, Professor Anup Rai sir has uh, very much expertise on this uh, uh, subject. And I don't want to speak much on the academic journey of Professor Anup Rai sir. Professor Anup Rai sir um, has, uh, has contributed a lot of articles to different national and international forums. And uh, he has also organized different uh, state level and national programs when he was faculty member of different government colleges. And he has, he's a very popular teacher his novel way of teaching to students is very much attractive and uh, he is also a popular writer in Odisha and who has uh, written more than 10 books on philosophy and all the books have been very popular among the students. So today I welcome Professor Anup Raisai to our philosophy family to be the speaker on the topic Faith in the Suspension of uh, and this I extend my welcome to Professor Pramod Kwanda, to Professor Pramod Kwanda, sir, with the main architect of philosophy family, with the host, convener, and admin of philosophy family. I welcome Professor Dr. Anubhrai, sir, the, uh, from, <laughs> Professor Dr. K. Umdhanan Rao, sir, the regular moderator of uh, philosophy family. So, I welcome them. With this, uh, I welcome once again to all the senior professors and participants of philosophy family. And I request Professor Anup Raisa to commence his page. Over to Professor Anup Raisa. Uh, thank you. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, I'm audible, sir. Um, Namaskar and good evening, everybody. At the outset, I take this opportunity to thank all uh, our very uh, own philosophy family and its esteemed member uh, who have given me an opportunity to discuss a topic on faith titled as faith is the suspension of disbelief the word faith is derived from the latin word fide and old French word 
faith, F-E-I-D. The meaning of the word is confidence or trust in a person, thing or a concept. In the context of religion, uh, faith can be defined as belief in God, belief in God or in the doctrines or teachings of religion. There are several definitions of faith. Different people have given different uh, definitions on faith. Uh, they have defined differently. For example, uh, Merriam Oster's dictionary defines it as something that believed especially with strong conviction, complete trust, belief and trust in God, as well as a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary puts it as trust, strong belief, unquestioning confidence. Apart from the dictionary, the different people have given different views in the individual level. Uh, Richard Hawkins views faith as blind trust in the absence of evidence and in the teeth of evidence. Opposing him, Griffith Thomas views that faith is not blind but intelligent and that it commences with the conviction of the mind based on adequate evidence. McGrath supports Thomas. He says that the definition of Thomas is a good and reliable definition synthesizing the core elements of characteristic Christian understanding of faith. <laughs> Historically speaking, in the Roman world, the root word fide FID, uh, the root word fide was understood without any particular association to gods or beliefs. Rather, it was understood as a paradoxical set of reciprocal ideas. Voluntary will and voluntary restraint in the sense of father over family. Here, one party willfully surrenders to a party who could do harm but chooses not to, thereby entrusting or confiding in them. In case of faith, faith is, in any case, faith is an attitude. Faith is turning away from the world, the act of desecularization the surrender of all seeming security and pretense, the willingness to live by the strength of the invisible and uncontrollable. Every man has two aspects. Every man has two options, to have choice or not to have choice. A man can decide to have an Inauthentic, inauthentic existence to be an inauthentic creature if he refuses to exercise his option in the matters of choice. Either he have to, uh, either he uh, have faith or not have faith. He can uh, either choose one of them, but if he can have um, uh, inauthentic existence, if he um, doesn't uh, exercise his option in the matter of choice. By following the crowd like a fish like uh, sheep like fashion or by being led by one's own past historical upbringing, a man becomes an inauthentic creature, has an inauthentic existence. Authentic existence of an individual 
consists in being liberated from normal routine life, from every self-made security, every pretense, um, from dependence on this earthly concern. Also, one has to be liberated from one's past to have faith. To have faith is to open yourself freely to the future. Faith also means obedience. For faith means turning our back to self and abandoning all security. It means giving up every attempt to carve out a niche for uh, ourselves and surrendering all our self-confidence and resolving to trust. Imagine uh, Draupadi in the assembly of Purus, in the Purusava. What happened? Uh, Purusava, full of um, Draupadi uh, standing and she is surrounded by uh, the assembly is full of all the seniors, all the gurus, all the teachers, all uh, his her relatives, and she is standing alone in the midst. Dushasan is trying to disturb her. Draupadi, um, uh, obviously, Draupadi was trying to keep her honor to save herself um, from shame. She is clutching her dress in both the hands. Dushasan is trying to disturb her. But uh, obviously Dushasan is uh, much stronger a man uh, than Draupadi. So, even she is um, clutching both in both the hands, Draupadi fell. So, what she did? She clutched her dress in one hand and raised the upper hand to pray God. You see, in one hand, she is trying to protect herself. In other hand, she is trying to uh, pray God, asking for God's help. Again, she failed because she is having, she is trying to have protection. Then what she did? She gave away all her protections, surrendered all her securities, and uh, bo raised both the hands and prayed for God. That is called faith. When you surrender completely before the object or God on whom you have faith, that is called faith. And obviously, then uh, help them. Faith is a never ending and never ceasing process. It is to be sustained by constant renewal of decisions. It is always a leap attending a risk. Faith is a voluntary submission to a person or ideology or to God. It is a voluntary ascent, not compelled by the object of faith. If I have faith in God, God is not telling me that I keep faith in me or my Guru is not telling me to keep faith in me. It is my voluntary ascent to have faith on Him. It is not that the person or God on whom we have faith has compelled us to do have faith in Him. It is a voluntary submission. There is an involvement of an intellectual assent to that which is to be believed. If we follow Thomas Aquinas, the medieval thinker, faith is an act of will, faith is an act of intellect assenting to the truth at the command of the will. Yes, Thomas Aquinas uh, says us that it is an intellectual ascent. But I think faith is something more than an intellectual ascent. It has some more element present in uh, faith, more than intellectual ascent or agreement. Imagine you are why I say that um, faith and some faith is something more than simple intellectual accent. Then suppose you are um, imagine yourself you are at um, Niagara Falls. 
Niagara Falls, bordering Canada and America. You are sitting there, safely, securely, and looking, uh, enjoying the enchantingly ferocity, ferocity of the fall. Um, you saw a tightrope walker walking across the rope over the fall and holding a wheelbarrow in his hand. Wheelbarrow, the one wheeled cart that we uh, uh, push uh, in the malls to collect um, uh, articles or uh, the scavenger uh, collects garbage in the streets. He is pushing a wheelbarrow back and forth over the rope, over the fall, across the rope. Then he invites a volunteer, invites a volunteer uh, to come and sit in the wheelbarrow so that he will push him to the other end of the fall. Sitting safely at a distance, you may agree, you may assent that yes, this man, the walker, can successfully push the volunteer to the other end of the fall. But that is not faith, not biblical faith. You yourself has to sit in the wheelbarrow and let the walker push you over the fall, which is 160 feet sharp top from this end to that end and uh, submitting, so, uh, having the submission or entrusting yourself fully to the walker. Then only it is called, it will be called as faith. Simply sitting at a distance and giving assent is not faith. Is not faith. Then faith is a working hypothesis. As a hypothesis determines the mode and direction of an in, sorry, mode and direction of an inquiry, faith creates its fruits and has its own verification. Faith is created as it constitutes the totality of framework. The believer cannot but act in a way which follows from the act of believing. The choice between faith and non-faith is momentous. It is, the mom it is momentous in the sense that one cannot afford to escape from both. He has to choose either of the two to have faith or not to have faith, non faith. And such a choice is vital because one has to stake one's life on that. Faith can be scientific or religious. A scientific supposition or faith turns out to be true or false in terms of predictable consequences. Religious faith is verified by the fact that it gives inner quietude and contentment. It is the bliss or ananda, if you use in the terminology of Indian philosophy. It is an epic adventure leading to the cognition of the absolute. There is a difference between faith and belief. Faith is a voluntary suspension of disbelief, as I have told you. In our common life, most of the time, we use uh, faith and belief interchangingly. We don't uh, care much to differentiate between them. Um, but there is a difference. There is a difference between faith and belief. Faith is a strong trust and confidence in something or in someone. But belief is a state or habit of mind in which trust or confidence is placed in some person or thing. Secondly, faith mostly used in refer to religion. It has an inherent reference of God and his words. But belief is used in a more general context. A belief, uh, uh, faith is used in the uh, context of religion mainly, but belief is used anywhere. 
we can say i believe that there are two books on the table uh, in that room uh, but we don't say that i have the faith that we i have there are two books in the room uh, in that room belief has a wider base naturally has a wider base than faith again faith implies devotion the element of love sacrifice and service present in faith therefore you will see all the religious institutions or religious person they spread the message of love they do social services they do they sacrifice their life for the a benefit of not only humanity benefit of the entire beings uh, no such feeling are present in belief faith means strong and unwavering trust in religion whereas belief may not be as strong as faith faith is different from belief in so far as the latter is more or less determined or constrained by the fact or reality but faith postulates an ideal or uh, ideal and thereafter proceeds to verify the ideal as actual in the absence of a faith venture human knowledge will be limited within the actuality belief is more or less constrained by fact or actuality that already is or will be i believe that god will god is created or god will be created i believe that, that from me god will come it is actuality uh, will be independently of any striving of ours it is independent of us and which convinces us faith on the other hand reaches beyond the actual and given to the ideally possible it is like a mathematician positing his entities and then by practical activity may realize or bring into actuality when i say that i have certain faith in something i don't give a statement which is either true or false faith statements are neither true nor false faith in knowledge creates an attitude towards knowledge a disposition to seek it treasure it use it and communicate it to have faith is to participate in the very ground of one's being that is why it is said that faith is the response of the total self the object of ultimate concern faith is different from religion generally faith is understood as belief and religion is understood as a rational faculty of human mind anthony kenny offers three senses in which faith as belief in god is understood in the religion anthony kenny believes that in three senses uh, faith is understood uh, faith uh, belief is understood as faith in god anthony kenny offers three senses in which faith as belief in god understood in the religion one believe that there is god that god exists to belief in a doctrine on the word of god as revealed by god third belief in god as trust in god and commitment to him these are the three senses can you uh, says that uh, faith is faith as belief is uh, in god is understood in this in islam also the requirement of faith are not that you are that in islam also the requirement of faith are that you should have belief in allah one god belief in angels of allah belief in prophets of allah belief in books of allah belief in the last day and belief in the decree of allah out of these six first five are from the holy quran 
last one from other books. On the other hand, reason is based on evidence. So it is a rational belief. A rational belief either itself be evident or be based directly or indirectly on what is evident. From the discussions we have done so far, it is obvious that faith carries a lot of importance in religion. Or it is better to say that faith is the foundation of most of the religions. Bible comes near to define faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. In the Bible, the object of faith is God and his promises. In Islam, Allah and in Buddhism, uh, the teachings of Buddha and so on. In Genesis 15, uh, it is said, in Genesis 15, Abram encounters God and God promises him that he will have countless descendants, descendants after him. Abram believed the Lord and that he is righteousness. No unbelief made him over concerning the promise of God. No other argument, no counter argument, no counter belief. Sukhar faith, his faith. On the other hand, he grew strong in his faith and sang the glory of God. Fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Thus, faith means putting your trust in God and having confidence that he will fulfill his promises. For a religious person, faith is which convinces him, convinces him of his faith to create for him a worldview, a perspective from which he is to interpret all his experience. A religious man interprets every, even ordinary events from uh, God point of view, from his uh, faith point of view. Who did? God did it. it oh, what happened? It's God's will. Um, the reality discovered by the faithful is not subjective, but, but is as much real as the objective reality objective reality discovered by the empirical scientist. To him, God exists as, for an empirical scientist, grass exists. It, it is, uh, for him, uh, the object of faith, faith is as much real as the object discovered by an empiricist scientist. A true belief carries with it a commitment to the way of God, love, sacrifice, service become the inevitable outward expression of the inner act of faith. Faith is the foundation of all religious activities and keen to belief, concern, worship, devotion, grace, attitude, involvement, commitment, etc. And therefore, response to a certain kind of vision or the worldview. Faith is a willed commitment. It is total and ultimate concern. What we call Shraddha in Indian philosophy. It formulates, governs the total life of the believer. Faith is the stance, the perspective, the model. It is the choice of view of life or more broadly, the basis of one's meaning of life. Faith is the principle by which one lives and in accordance, accordance to which, um, with which one lives and in accordance with which he interprets his experiences. To imagine a faith being vindicated is to imagine a mere belief being proved. Faith engineers religious knowledge. Religious language is basically faith expressions. 
science too. Cannot get rid of faith. Faith is the soldier, the frontline soldier. Ventures into the dark areas of knowledge, fights, open new horizons, acquire new ter territories for human knowledge. And then, in the acquired territory, science builds its castles. Still, science is reluctant to give faith the status of knowledge. Clegg, Clegg says that faith may be shaken, crossed, clasped, lost, abandoned, but not falsified. Faith is a way of looking at and understanding the world. It is a willed commitment to some type of behavior. Faith is a conviction in certain values beyond the rational, scientific, and logical activities. Faith is a, as I have told you, faith is a voluntary suspension of this belief. So friends, believe Descartes, believe some Krasachev. Maybe there is some magician uh, cheating you, deceiving you all the time, or maybe you are under the spell of Maya. You are under the spell of Maya. So, pull down all your knowledge structure, cross all your principles, dogmas, doubts, disbeliefs, and debates, and have faith. It is not a one-time affair. Disbelief has to be suspended, and suspension has to be extended indefinitely. This act of faith is voluntary, a will commitment cannot be imposed upon. Be bold, be different. Nobody counts the footprints of one in the herd. Keep aside the world. Faith is a call. Sarvadharmam Paritencha Mametan Sarvadharmam. Hello, Anup sir. Hello. Call us, sir. Call us, sir. Call us, sir. Bond hi leta? Hello. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Call us, sir. 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 Not audible? No, I'm not audible. Actually, it's a discussion. Oh, oh, oh. Discussion is over. Discussion is over. Okay, 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 thanks so much. Okay, thanks so much, sir. Sir, sir, uh, today, uh, we extend our gratitude to Professor Anupraya for his very conceptual uh, discussion on the faith is the suspension of uh, okay, disbelief and uh, it's the logic of faith that uh, he has uh, already discussed. And Professor Anupraya has very clearly given the conceptual analysis of a faith, and he has also uh, he has also given the conceptual difference between faith, disbelief, um, uh, and uh, <coughs> as it is in different uh, uh, religions, um, he has uh, given the intellectual. Maharana sir, unmute sir, unmute. Unmute sir, Maharana sir. Okay. So today he has given, he has focused on uh, the faith from different aspects. So I don't want to explore much of his uh, uh, the discussion. Now I would like to request Professor Dr. K. Umnar Rao to carry in the internet session. Over to Dr. Rao. Yeah. <laughs> 
नमस्कार एवरीबॉडी आई शुड थैंक डॉक्टर अनूप राय फॉर हिज नाइस लेक्चर एंड एंड फाइंडिंग अ डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन फेथ एंड बिलीफ एंड इट वाज अ गुड लेक्चर आई आई शुड से एंड आज गुड जस्टिफाई दैट हाउ फेथ comes to be a sort of uh, giving away all sorts of disbeliefs well i will have my comments and um, my own stand on this well uh, let us go to um, the participants uh, we have with us dr ranjit ghos sir to initiate the discussion dr ghos to sir dr ghos sir namaskar sir please dr ranjit ghos sir sir namaskar namaskar uh, namaskar हेलो हाँ ऑडिबल ऑडिबल यू आर वेरी मच ऑडिबल सर प्लीज स्टार्ट लेट अस थैंक डॉक्टर अनुप राय फॉर हिज नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन फेथ सो फेथ एंड बिलीफ दिस टू थिंग्स एट टाइम्स दे आर यूज्ड इंटरचेंजेबली एंड when we discuss about faith separately we just should not uh, uh, equate faith with some religious faith there is in science also there is faith because in uh, the, as we get religious faith so also scientists they are also having faith when they frame a hypothesis about an unknown cause they just Uh, stop this believing that this will not happen at all they just think that it may happen so for that reason they uh, start um, uh, framing a hypothesis about some unknown cause so what is faith then faith is a uh, is a strong belief without any proof this is one thing in faith and another thing in faith is this most important that when we are in a maze of doubt then it is it acts as a light because because when if you take doubt as a darkness and you get the ray of light from the faith or belief so faith and belief i think they are used interchangeably in most of the occasions so therefore uh, obviously faith is the absence of disbelief we we uh, have to accept it logically that when there is a disbelief we don't have faith so this is these are just some observations i uh, wanted to make otherwise uh, as as he has said that uh, opposite of faith is disobedience this is so far as religion is concerned the opposite of faith is disobedience but in common life when we do not believe something we become unfaithful so unfaithful and disobedience are two uh, different things because when i become unfaithful to my relation then that is a that is at a personal level but when i disobedient when i become disobedient uh, when i uh, oppose faith uh, about a religion then that becomes a disobedience so you see all these concepts and terms they just criss cross that is what i used to say i, I am i am suggesting to say that uh, these words are to be used very carefully and cautiously so that we can uh find that faith belief disbelief and uh, trust confidence all these things will come to the light thank you sir 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 uh, ranjit sir namaskar sir namaste namaste ranjit sir namaskar namaskar so am i audible to you yes yes you are audible sir uh, if we say that uh, knowledge is justified true belief at the same time can we say that it is true faith can you say 
just no, give no, knowledge. No, no, no. I, I, I have not brought knowledge here at all. Okay. I, I am talking about belief, belief system. And no, no. Uh, yes, uh, because because you see, the, no, no. Uh, when, when the question of, uh, the, you, you must uh, be knowing that Sir. there are two primary sources of knowledge and there are many other secondary sources yeah, of knowledge it's, it's, and faith, say, faith, intuition and all these are secondary sources of knowledge. Mm -hmm. okay? okay and so faith, is, faith cannot be uh, the same as sense perception which which is either true or false faith okay. is something which is which 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 operates it is more than a feeling it is more than the observable facts it is more than seeing so that is faith this is what I suggested. I have not brought knowledge into the fold of discussing faith. And <laughs> if we say that I have faith in God and I believe in God, both are the same thing. Same thing. That is interchangeable. Faith and uh, belief and faith. No, no. I, I believe in God. Okay. But I cannot uh, uh, say that God exists. Okay. That is... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So then that becomes a now, knowledge okay. claim knowledge claim. What about, I, what about I, I have faith in God? Yes, I can have a faith in God. Okay. But that faith in God will not uh, uh, help me to establish a knowledge claim that God exists. I have seen it. Okay, so, sir. So when that uh, some uh, realized people like Ramakrishna Paramahansa and others, they have uh, seen God as, and that is there. We are getting from their life and their uh, uh, saying that they have a type of belief which is different from the common, ordinary, common sense belief. Sir, okay. 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 sir can I say? Thank you, thank, uh, thank please, you, sir. Please, Dr. Rai, please. Uh, um, you know, a simple uh, village priest comments more respect than a university professor because the village priest have faith in God. A university professor like us, we have we believe in God. That's the difference. His entire life, the village uh, priest has the entire life dedicated to God. He has in from the core of a heart, his heart, he believes that God is there. It is his faith. But we, the professor, professing uh, the existence of God, we have the belief in God. That is the difference between faith and belief. You see, the entire uh, in the Western philosophy and as well as in Indian philosophy, there is always a distinction between faith and reason. Okay, so faith uh, uh, leads uh, you to nowhere. That is what we have seen, what has done in the medieval ages, uh, the uh, belief in the Christianity, and then the onset of rationality through the rationalist philosophers. So faith and reason, they always uh, conflict with each other. Okay. So that is the situation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Ghosh, uh, Dr. Mahapatro, and uh, Dr. Roy. Well, I was listening to all of you very uh, carefully. Um, what I could gather here is um, when uh, Dr. Brindavan Mahapatro, sir, raised a question, he, he made a distinction. He, want, he, he tried to bring in knowledge, connecting faith and belief. As you have a standard uh, definition of knowledge, knowledge is justified through belief. And we won't see a parallel with this sort of definition be connected with knowledge, justified through faith. Well, Dr. Gose has clearly pointed out, when we talk of a belief, it comes under the fold of being true or false, because somehow reason is connected. Somehow evidence is connected with a belief system, a belief pattern, because there we can attach to truth or falsity. But when we talk of faith, faith is something which is personal. I have a faith and faith is something personal and the element truth of falsity that I cannot openly put forth that we do in logic. Well, I have a faith and that's test of truth and falsity. I may put myself to test a personal sort of language that I have within me and that may create a sort of knowledge claim for me and that cannot be publicly put forth. But when you talk of belief, it has some rational ground, it has some evidence. Oh, and that's why belief has a scientific connectivity because we are connected in a belief, but we are never disconnected in faith. Because in faith, it is something personal. So the test of knowledge, when you take knowledge as a justified true faith, 
it is something purely personal and purely operative that cannot be brought to the public fore that cannot be claimed with the public system or that, that cannot be brought to somebody else i cannot i cannot impose on but when you talk of a belief that sort of definition is possible but in both the cases a claim of knowledge is possible one at the public level but in faith it is purely personal this is my understanding to the entire point thank you so much okay okay sir well, dr krishnamurthy sir wants to say something yeah i may have to say sir audible sir but not visible sir uh, i will i will make it visible please okay yes sir uh, yeah <coughs> Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Anup Roy, for your nice uh, lecture on faith is the suspension of disbelief. I can argue in two ways. Number one, why should I have faith? As a philosopher, I don't believe in anything, excepting the fact, unless and until I. arrive at the inference logically scientifically religiously i don't have the uh, faith or belief i have only disbelief so i will try to arrive at the permutation and combination and start believing later the second aspect is to have faith is to believe something that has no tangible proof you agree with me or not why would i have to believe in something which you cannot or you cannot prove about it take for instance existence of god is it a leap of faith is it a detriment of what we know to be fact in the hope that a spiritual influence will intervene that is not correct in philosophy if faith comes from within the literature of religion like quran bible or gita is there a particular mechanism that can define a document of faith is my i mean clarification i need to be clarified by a good i mean from your end professor thank you Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doctor Roy. Sir, um, because it is not very much audible, I failed to uh, uh, grasp your question. Sorry. Uh, please repeat. Pramodu, please help. The, uh, Actually, yeah, please uh, please. Pramod, 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 sir, please yes, sir. Pramod, sir, please um, please bring the question uh, in a clear term so that Anup Rai, sir. Ah, ah. Anup, Anup, sir, we will say. Ah, Anup, sir, will uh, respond. Just, just give the hint to the question. What? What? Mr. Kuti, sir, wanted to ask. Please say in a line so that Anup, sir, can respond. Then you can make an addition to that, addition subtraction. Okay, sir. Uh, then, then. Um, then what is the question? Actually, I also could not grasp because uh, yes, yes, because it was so uh, mala. It was uh, not clearly audible. So, if if you have um, hard uh, Krishna Murthy sir right, then please, okay, put in the question so that Anupraj sir can respond. Sir, please, sir, Krishna Murthy sir, please re repeat your question in a line or two because. we are not able to hear you proper sir sir again please sir in a line or two what is your question sir hello yes sir can i clarify it now ha ah, question okay. again sir yes sir yes sir sir one See, thing sir, two, sir one, one is thing, sir. sir one thing sir please put off your um, um, camera so that your voice will get richer put off your camera so that your voice will get richer now nah, now speak sir now speak See, I can argue in two ways. 
the first way is to why should I have faith? That is the first question. Faith is a suspension of disbelief. Why should I have faith as a philosopher? I don't have faith. Because I want to arrive at logically bring the inference. The second question is, if I have faith, is to believe something that has no tangible proof. These are the two questions which I just posed. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Why, of course, uh, whether you will have faith or not, it's a very personal uh, problem, personal question, because um, I may or may not have faith uh, in, say, God. I may have faith or faith, may not faith. As a philosopher, uh, you can be very much logical. Uh, but in real life, in practical life, we do have faith. Everybody has this or that kind of faith. Either you believe in God or you don't believe in, disbelieve in God, but you have faith something. Though it is not necessary for, the, uh, for a person, to a philosopher specifically, to have faith. And uh, second question is, second question is, sir, second one is? He says, if I have uh, faith and I believe in something, something, uh, something exactly may not be there. Huh. Exactly may, huh. uh, yeah, best, best, very much. Uh, if is there I, any tangible proof for that? No, 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 not at all any proof. Faith has no proof. Uh, it is, uh, as I have told you, that um, uh, it is uh, evidentless, even at the, it is a, it is a, it's a kind of commitment. You don't need any proof here. Um, nobody, uh, when proof, uh, matter of proof comes, question of proof comes, it becomes a scientific inquiry, empirical inquiry. Uh, but um, uh, faith doesn't have any proof. You have to believe. Um, uh, whether it is right, right or wrong. Uh, I don't know whether there is God or not, but I blindly believe that God is there. This is faith. I'm, uh, that, that there is no necessity that you have faith, or there is no proof that there is faith. There is the object of faith. Yes, that, uh, Professor Pramod, sir. Well, you wanted to say something. Professor Pramod. <laughs> As I have already told you that uh, faith is uh, more than mere seeing, faith is more than observable facts, faith is more than feelings. So these things we have to keep in mind. So faith is uh, getting a special status rather in the uh, entire system of knowledge. That is what I wanted to say. Thank you. And science doesn't give it the status of knowledge. That's uh, sir, hello, hello, sir. S uh, hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Call us, sir. Please, please. Sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, in the um, in Uriya saying, okay, there is a statement that Vishwas uh, milai hari tarke bahudur. So uh, actually, uh, by faith uh, we we can have a relation with God, but we 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 can relate God, and by argument we can't. And uh, you have said that uh, faith is something uh, on questioning act. Uh, but um, uh, if you study the Vedic uh, system, then you can get that uh, in in Vedic system, the disciples used to argue with the teachers, or uh, or they um, they were engaged in dialects with God. Uh, what is God? What is the relation of human beings to God? What is so dear? And Actually, they were engaged. They were engaging himself in asking different type of questions to, uh, to the teacher, that is to know what is God. Another thing that in uh, that is in the philosophy of religion, we are engaged in discussing uh, the, uh, the belief in God and disbelief in God. Do we think that our 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 argument will sustain our belief in God or faith in God? Or still there, we are engaged in the argument uh, in, uh, that is the belief in God and uh, uh, disbelief in God. Still then, we have strong confidence. We have strong faith in God. Then what is your, uh, um, that is, what is your stand on this? 
विश्वास से मिले ये हरी कट के बहुत दूर दैट इज दैट इज व्हाट फेथ इज इट इज सेड दैट हार्ट हैज द लॉजिक व्हिच हेड डजंट अंडरस्टैंड फेथ इज अ मैटर ऑफ हार्ट आई बिलीव इफ यू इफ इन वेजर थ्योरी इफ आई रीड जस्ट इट इज बेटर टू बिलीव दैट देयर इज गॉड बिकॉज इफ आई थ्रू आउट माय लाइफ i believed god and after death i found that there is really god then i am benefited but suppose throughout the life i believe that there is no god i didn't do anything what god has said or i am not ethical i am not moral i am not religious i am not uh, love uh, service to the people and after death i found that god exists then my entire life will be at a loss therefore wiser theory says that believe in god uh, that is that is a suggestion a theory which the theory it is called but um, it is a matter of heart to believe or not argument arises in case of logic in case of philosophy philosophers for centuries tried their best to prove the existence of god we have seen in uh, western philosophy but they miserably failed because proving something is to be proved objectively a god or in uh, has no objective existence as we know god concept as as we the well, we have the concept of god so it's a matter of faith we believe it is not at all a object of proof is where faith is not the absence of doubt you see doubt doubt is there but faith also faith and doubt they, they run parallel in a pa- parallel no 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 i don't uh. think that if you have faith means you are you are turning away yourself from the uh, world no no Just, do you do you suggest that faith is uh, uh, not absence of doubt faith, faith is the absence of doubt yes faith of absence of doubt complete absence of doubt ah uh, yes yeah complete absence of doubt man a faithful cannot doubt the existence of uh, what he believes the sir sir faith is not at all included in the knowledge discourse it is not no. at all discourse included no 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 faith is What? not included in uh, scientific knowledge discourse. knowledge discourse it is not the scientific knowledge discourse. only normal knowledge it is not at all included what do you mean by knowledge normal knowledge no, knowledge <laughs> means common knowledge knowledge means scientific knowledge Sci- okay okay that may be and uh, so, uh, you have uh, i think it is in hospos a discussion on sources of knowledge this is not said to uh, not give in the status of knowledge okay, okay. yes uh, professor das wants to wanted to say something professor das <coughs> ji there yes yes am i audible Yes, yes you are. Right. Uh, actually, it is very clear. I think there is no problem in this topic and in this discussion. Yeah, very, 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 very slow. Volume is very slow. Slow volume. For now, now it is, is it clear? Mm-hmm. Better, better. Okay. Uh, there are three dimensions of a cognitive process. One is perception. second one is reason and the third one is faith perception is scientific reason is philosophical and faith is religious science philosophy and religion we deal with we all human beings uh, deal with these three uh, three faculties uh, science philosophy and religion what happens Inside, so now better you uh, switch off your video. We can listen better. Yes, sir, it is clear, also. sir. It is audible. Okay, it is audible, okay. audible but not very. Uh, it is low, I think. Sir, on the sir, for the time, sir, for for the time, then put off your uh, microphone. Uh, okay, microphone, please put off, sir. On the sir, now you can hear better. Yes, from us, sir, continue. Okay. <coughs> In science, no, sir, uh, am I audible now? 
it's very very okay, clearly okay. Okay. very clearly okay. Okay. okay in science we rely on perception whatever is perceived that is taken as the source of knowledge and science believe believes in that science believes in perception whatever is beyond perception that is not the domain of a scientific knowledge but that is not the end of our knowledge therefore the close of uh, the, the door is closed there so this is the limitation of perception whatever is not perceived that is not discussed in science then the second possibility is philosophy which deals with reason what happens in reason even something is not perceived that can be thought that can be discussed for example we can discuss the negation in philosophy we can discuss we can think of the opposite of a something proper dialect dialectical reason is dialectical that means uh, if even if something is not perceived we can we can think of it logically because um, suppose i say ma bhavo and abhav existence and non existence p and not p if we think of p then we can also think of not p and we can also establish the relation between p and not p that p and not p is a contradiction we can we can think that way so this is a higher dimension beyond perception beyond scientific knowledge so reason is wider than perception so in the dialectic process what happens we have the two opposites and these two opposites can be thought of and we have to believe either one you can't believe both thesis and antithesis if you believe in thesis from one thesis at the same time you cannot believe in um, its, its antithesis and dr rai very beautifully said that whenever we believe we give a reason to it believe is a belief is reason based that means it comes under the process of reasoning suppose you have you believe p then you have a reason to believe p in hospos also it is said if something is true it it must be believed to be true if something is true it must be believed to be true suppose you don't believe it does not affect the truth truth is truth whether you believe or don't believe so if something is true it must be believed to be true so we, we suppose i believe in something i have to give a reason why i should believe this or that or i why i don't believe but beyond this dialectics it is gene the door of reason is closed we can't go further but knowledge does not end there there comes faith so faith is the that ocean of phenomena which is left by um, left beyond phenomena because in a kant said by the best application of a perception and reason perception and reason we can know only the noumena still the fish are there left in the ocean and they are they, they are there and this is also logically presupposed so by reason and perception we can know only what appears to be known what, what is phenomenal so there is a noumena which is a matter of practical reason or faith we 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 we, we um, this is the highest dimension as uh, the, the, the professor ghosh said that faith is wider than perception and uh, reason so if we go in this order perception is limited reason is wider than perception and faith is much wider and it, this is the uh, this has a higher dimension if we go in this order but we can go also in the reverse order what is the reverse order first we have to faith we have a faith then we start the process of knowing first we have a faith that that is called bhakti yoga that is called love that is called sadhavan labhyat gyan i have a faith in uh, what is the meaning of a verbal testimony because i have what is the meaning of authority i am reading this book means i have a faith in this book i am i am i am learning from a teacher means i have faith in my teacher as kolyasar said 
that in the Upanishadic tradition, Upanishadic age, disciples were, disciples had strong faith in their teachers. That whatever teacher will say, that must be true. And from that sadha, from that love, our cognitive process will start. Without that faith, and we cannot do it. Number two, I, uh, this is my observation, it may be correct or incorrect. Number two, the, uh, uh, the factor of uh, risk. There is risk in perception because science says everything is relative. Whatever is perceived, that may, may be denied, that may be challenged to be true. So perception, in perception there is risk. In reasoning also there is risk because if there is an opposite possibility, if there is an opposition in dialectics, you are taking a risk, accepting the one, one horn of the dilemma. So there is also risk in the reasoning. But that, similarly, there is a risk in faith. But because faith is the foundation of all cognitive process, we have to go through the faith. Only because the reality is vast, but the human understanding is very low. Therefore, there is always a domain of faith because everything cannot be settled by human perception and reason. This is a religious attitude. The scientific attitude is what we perceive. The philosophical attitude is what we, what we establish through arguments, reason, through logic. But it is the religious attitude that we should have a faith that reason and perception are limited. Beyond these two sources, there is a domain of noumena, there is a domain of um, reality which cannot be assessed by our reason and our perception. So, so naturally, um, this is the dimension of faith. Without that faith, I am giving another example. In logic also, in inductive logic, what happens? Inductive inference. Now, white crowd is available. Can you say all clothes are white, all clothes are black? So whenever we are making a conclusion that all crows are black, it is only a faith. Because, because we can't give guarantee, we can't give 100% guarantee that nature will behave uniformly on the basis of what David Hume said. You can't give so much guarantee that connection between cause and effect. We take it, we accept it as a faith, therefore we establish the inductive argument. We observed thousand cases, thousand crows to be black. Therefore, we are guessing, we are, we are having a faith that all crows are black. But if a single negative instance is found, the conclusion that all crows are black will be cancelled. And that now, that the white crow is available. What is the guarantee that all men will be mortal? So, the in, in the inductive are reasoning also, that is an element of faith. In scientific laboratory also, that is an element of faith. So, because without faith, we cannot start our cognitive process. This is my submission. I agree with the, um, Professor Rao, 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 Rao. Uh, very beautifully he, he is saying that um, faith is religious in that sense. It cannot be established in the scientific approach and by the philosophical approach. It is, it is beyond that and it is the basic of all um, uh, cognitive process. Thank you. This is my observation. Um, um, yes, yeah, anybody's respond, response over my observation. Yes, thank you, Professor Das. Uh, well, Anup sir, uh, would you like to say something? Well, what I could see from Professor Das, uh, uh, first of all, the distinction that he made. He took perception for science, reason for a philosopher, and faith for a spiritual science. And I somehow uh, uh, find uh, a sort of disparity in this, because science is no more confined to perception or less confined to perception these days. It is more confined to constructs. These days, the modern science is more confined to constructs where the constructs are defined in terms of probabilities. 
when you come to the classical system of science well it was based on perception but the modern science is more based on constructs in these constructs we have probabilities coming in and in these probabilities we find an element of faith so we cannot negate faith even in the scientific world which ranjit gosar was been pointing out well faith is more than science yes uh, you say that you say that but uh, we cannot characterize science to perception alone we cannot char characterize reason to philosopher alone we cannot um, um, give faith to spirituality alone so that becomes a problem because faith has its presence in a scientist faith has its presence in a philosopher and also faith has a uh, presence in a religious man yes yes exactly i said that faith is faith element is there is is, is bound to be there in science philosophy and religion because human domain of understanding is very limited and the um, the reality is so vast so there will be a gap between what is known and what is um, uh, what is the total uh, truth so that the faith is an element should be there in science philosophy and basically in religion Okay. If we that way, if you if, if you go with this, if you agree with this, then we should not confine science to perception. We should not confine religion to a philosophy. We should not confine faith to spirituality. Sir, 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 even in religion also, even in religion also, I said that when we are making a general proposition from the enumeration of uh, uh, some um, some instances. that is also an element of faith because we cannot give 100% guarantee like deduction as deduction is there, no 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 in a, no 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 there is a problem arises faith when you give that example of induction that there is no faith there is an element of belief that is a belief system because there is a grounding we have seen thousands lakhs of crows passing by and they are black and they are black already we have gone number of enormous evidences so there is an element of belief but not an element of faith because faith when you talk of faith that is something unseen that is the perceptibility that is not there the grounding is not there it is something which has to be okay, taken for granted and you have no analysis to that and it cannot be explained but when you give the example of induction that is an element of belief there we are running with Okay, we have we have already all of that. We cannot assign faith there. Okay, that is the problem that I carry with this. And um, one more. Hello, uh, yes, Dr. Rao. Yes, sir. Uh, here I want to uh, bring Locke into discussion, John Locke. And uh, when there was a controversy on faith and reason, uh, he wrote an essay uh, on reasonableness of knowledge. That means uh, knowledge and. Uh, Uh, this reasonableness of knowledge is different from reason you see that what can be reasonable so reason and reasonable these are two different things and for uh, that and that way uh, dr das has uh, referred to kant and kant in his critic of pure reason has said let us stop knowledge for some time and let us make room for faith so so that is that that is what uh, 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 this reminded me of law where he said that it is a uh, reasonableness and so will bring uh, this type of uh, conflict between faith and reason into practice that is a type of practical knowledge that we are getting thank you sir sir locks log is saying i know not what i know yeah. not what if the qualities are there there must be the substance but i know Not I know what, not what. Yeah. I know not what. Here yes. comes the, here comes the faith, but mm. it is it is a based of the reason. The uh -huh. reason is there uh -huh. because the quality qualities can no qualities without substance. From it is not scientifically proved. proved. Okay, okay. because uh, we can experience only the qualities, both the primary and secondary qualities. But uh -huh. what is that substratum? I that cannot that I uh, cannot establish, and that is what something yes. I know not. But doctor, yeah. but what this omission of doctor Rai is that faith is the basic of epistemology because so that I'm not able to get no. You are not audible. You are not audible, sir. You are not audible. Yes, um, but this omission of doctor Rai, as I, I, as I have understood him, his his position is he is saying faith is the basic to human understanding or human 
cognitive process because sadhavan labhyata gyana we have to start with faith we yeah yeah i also say <laughs> saying the same yes, thing yes. i'm also saying the same thing if you, uh, if you don't have a faith if you don't have a faith in your teachers and verbal testimony is that authority seat is that if you don't believe in a book then you the that means your your door is closed your cognitive door is closed so be, be, why why should you have faith sinivasan um, ji asked this question why you should have the faith because you are finite because your cognitive process is limited because you have a tiny brain your mind is very slow very low but the reality is so vast and can't prove that by putting the net in the ocean that you see what much i can get or oh, i can get that much according to the whole of my net so we can know that much according to the categories of our understanding according to the limitation of our um, uh, knowing system that means if we admit that uh, we are ignorant in various ways we are ignorant in various ways we are living in a very small island of knowledge surrounded by the vast ocean of ignorance if we admit that naturally the um, the um, the faith element will inspire us to have better knowledge but and knowledge is not never end there is no end to knowledge knowledge is always subject to division science is always subject to division philosophy is always subject to division why there is division because we start with faith then we try to prove it we fail to prove it we fail to find a conclusion therefore there is no conclusion in philosophy why there is no conclusion in philosophy because we because there cannot be any conclusion because we cannot reach at the conclusion because our mind is so limited so without faith we cannot make a human relationship also we cannot make a social relationship also we have faith in our father with we have we how, how a grown up doctor can live with his father on what on what basis not rationally that my father is a professor therefore i am said no she has faith that my father will not misbehave me sometimes also um, 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 accidents take place but this is a faith i am driving my bike or motor car means i know that is the gravitational force and that is working and that is uniformity of nature even we have a faith in the uniformity of nature that yes the next morning sun will rise then everything will be good this is our faith but that faith may not stand therefore faith is also a risk but without faith we cannot live we cannot live i have a suppose we have a pet pet dogs because the pet dog is an animal it can bite according to its instinct but i have a faith that my pet dog will not bite therefore i am um, um, carrying it so this is the faith without faith we cannot have suppose suppose one girl is going with five boys those who are classmates or colleagues on what basis only the faith that they that i am safe with these people without faith we cannot uh, walk on the road without faith we cannot um, um, work in the workplace without faith we cannot exist at all we, we have a faith also that oxygen will be there and i shall be i shall be breathing all the time belief in god and faith in god is the big things there is also freedom whether you will believe in god or this is optional at least we have a faith in the law of nature at least we have a faith in human relationship suppose the buddha manasar will beg me 1 lakh rupees i shall give him only on the faith that he will return me but he may not return that is risk but without the faith lo- pure by logic we can't live by making only arguments we can't live by only perception we cannot live many times we live by faith why why because i have faith then comes reason 
because uh, this is my what comes from my heart i am telling when here i am not arguing i am telling from my heart so very rightly professor rai said faith is a loving element faith is a uh, emotional sentiment that is sadha out of that sadha a scientist becomes scientist a philosopher becomes a philosopher a teacher becomes a teacher a father becomes a father without that faith no relationship is also possible no creation is possible no creation is possible without faith thank you sir thank you ranjit sir i think all are correct every every observer every viewer has given one one point right thank you thank you sir thank you okay thank you thank you thank you professor das well uh, well we have srinivas and krishnamurthy sir in queue but prior to inviting him let me make it one point clear because here is a point to make a distinction very much clear with respect to faith and belief because if we give examples from inductive logic or the sun rising tomorrow the is there are examples from belief patterns but they are, they are not elements of faith number one number two even when uh, dr ghosh pointed out Locke has uh, the definition of uh, um, substance as a substratum of qualities. There, an element of reason is involved. How can something have? How, how can something be without qualities? So, element of reason is involved there. So, there also there is no faith. There is element of belief. So, this is what I am saying. But when you talk of faith, you have nothing to say about. When you talk of belief, you have elements to corroborate to say that substance. Is, the substance is the substratum of qualities i know not what i know not what but that even though i say no not what but that accounts for a sort of infinite because i have qualities they can be nothing without qualities because which we the qualities is quite perceptible so you can say that it is not a fake fact but in fact you would have nothing to corroborate to your supposition so very nice very nice so even for law's definition there is more of a belief very nice Doctor Rao, Doctor Rao, you sir. had a, you had also said earlier that faith is very much personal. Belief can be justified. Sir, Belief not a, sir, not sir, not audible. Uh, you, you had said earlier that faith is personal. Faith is personal, and belief is belief belief is that which can be justified by reason. Why do you believe? You will give a reason to this. Why should you have faith? I am silent. So. i am not i am not compelled to give a justification to my faith okay because we have our personal worlds personal emotions personal sentiments so here faith is wider than belief belief is reason based you have to give a, as as you said and i agree with you so and also i have also told that when you say i believe then you have to give a reason why do you believe but when i say i have faith in my father or i have faith in in a person whom i am giving money then i nobody can challenge me nobody can ask me the question why do you have faith yes i have faith so this is the strength of faith in that sense we say i have faith in the existence of god and atheists say atheists say on the contrary that i have a faith that there is no god at all so not existence of a god this is also a faith they have and existence of a god this is also a faith on the, of the theist and both these faiths are very much personal very much personal and also at the same time very much convinced very much convinced but when we say i believe somehow or other we we may justify it by giving a reason i agree with the dr rao and also mm -hmm. professor rai is saying that you see the, what actually the, we know these things that uh, uh, when i say i uh, i i know p uh, the, the i know p to be true the proposition to p is true means i believe the proposition to be true now the thing is uh, that's why uh, uh, the one distinction has been made 
that uh, the secondary sources of knowing they are always dependent on uh, this uh, pratyaksha or anumana perception or uh, inference so that is why you see faith intuition and uh, revelation all these things they are dependent on these two things perception and uh, inference so we just uh, cannot exclude uh, faith and similarly we cannot say that faith is uh, something unfounded belief it is not that it is it, it is founded upon uh, either inference or perception thank you very nice thank you thank you sir well we have srinivas and krishnamurthy sir well he has left i think oh just now because he was in the queue he was in the queue wanted to say something when well, he left well um, uh, anybody uh, well um, uh, dr uh, anup rai sir well uh, your li- last words your final lines dr rai dr anup rai sir hmm. sir your final lines on listening to all this discussion going on all your talk you have uh, ignited uh, this evening so you are for final lines and at the same time he is silent because he has faith on what he has said i have, I have faith, faith in the participants therefore he is silent okay so okay, okay. have faith sarva dharma paritajya namekam sharanam praja Uh, well without faith life will not move we will have a human life existence very nice very nice very nice now vote of thank you okay now to um um uh, dr kalas mana sir for proposing a formal vote of thanks okay over to dr mahana <coughs> okay thanks so much dr now so <coughs> i was uh, enjoying the dialogues i was enjoying the observations of our learning participants so today it has uh, it has benefited a lot so today the way professor anup rai sir has reflected his uh, topic it is really a very a really a very good topic and it is also very excellent and we all have been engaged with that with the discussion and after the talk is over the discussion is very prejordi the discussions made by professor pramod uh, professor bundavan sir bundan mahapatra sir about uh, ranji sir srinivasan sir dr rao dr pramod kumar das all have i read their observation and i don't want to particularly summarize the observations of all our learning our participants so today what uh, i have got from the okay discussion that that uh, what has been also been summarized by uh, professor pramod pandas that speech is the basic to human understanding at uh, a professor ranji sir also said that faith is the very basic to human understanding that he has told that sradha um, band labhate kyana that uh, because of uh, because of faith human uh, that is human being is uh, evolving from finite to uh, infinite and all the possibilities are due to the reflection of faith that you had a professor onupra at last said that uh, faith is uh, faith implies life so you ha- if you have no faith then you cannot lead a proper uh, life so with faith we we evolve from matter to spirit that sri arabinda has told and uh, that is it is the logic of faith it it, it, it is the it, it is the logic of faith which has strengthened our attitude strengthened our understanding to that is to go to logic of infinite so so here we have a passage we have made from the logic of faith to the logic of infinite so today the discussion has has been very much fruitful very much uh, 
that praiseworthy that I can I I don't want to uh, that express in language that uh, <clears throat> that at last everybody uh, has uh, engaged himself in the discussion and uh, what Professor on Professor Rao has said that it's more than belief because uh, sometimes belief is uh, uh, a dividable belief is said to be debatable and personal, but the faith is something um, undivided, un undebatable. It is said to be sometimes uh, unpersonal. Though Professor Ranjit sir has said that faith is founded upon inference or the, um, or perception or like that. So today I extend my gratitude to all our professors, to all our learned uh, okay, participants to uh, to, st to strengthen their knowledge, to strengthen their and to reflect their philosophical uh, uh, reflection. I also um, extend my gratitude to Sabani Madam who has, uh, who has uh, given her uh, observation on chat box. And I, I am very much uh, grateful to all the participants who were present in our uh, the discussion and those who are present okay, till now. So with this, I extend my gratitude to Anubhadasta uh, to uh, initiate the discussion and to end the okay discussion. And I extend my gratitude to all our learned participants. And I would like to request Professor Pramod Pradas to wind up the session. Yes, only, only one sentence I will say. Even in human relationship, what happens? Sir, not audible, not, not audible. Uh, only one sentence I shall say. Even in human relationship, what happens? Suppose somebody um, does well all the time. He is very committed, he is very committed in his work. But suppose in one session or in one situation, he failed to do that. Still we accept, still we love, only because we have a faith in his integrity. That is how we live with others. Therefore, we excuse others. Therefore, we cooperate others. Because, because, because we don't take, uh, we don't have interpersonal relationship only rationally, only scientifically. We have faith on the integrity of somebody's personality. Yes, this man is that. This, for any reason, he may be angry, he may be, um, he may be misbehave me or maybe some other misunderstanding, but I have a faith that Anubhraya is like this, Dr. Rao is like this, or Mahana Sar is like this. This is my faith on the personality. Even in politics also, we have a faith in a political leader, we have a faith in Indian culture. In this way, we actually live. But when in the classroom or when, or when we, are, we are discussing something, we take the help of a regime. That my baddha, your baddha, who will, who will win? But nobody wins in any baddha. But in personal life, in social life, actually we rely on faith. And that leads to silence. That leads to peace of mind. That is Tita Pragya in Bhagavad Gita. Because I have strong faith that there is something that is controlling everything. Anyway, uh, I am very happy that Kundaman Sari is with us uh, and we are, we are grateful, we are very much grateful. We solicit your presence, sir. Sir, please be with us. We always miss you. Please be with us. No, no, Professor, I don't know if my mobile is leaking, but I don't know if I'm going to leak. Again. I don't know if I'm going to leak. I don't know if I'm going to leak. Again, again. But I don't know if I'm going to leak. Okay, sir. Sir, I'm going to leak. I'm going to leak. I'm going to leak. I'm going to leak. Sir, I'm going to leak. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. 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 मुखले आपनों को आजी अनुसार को ये देखी करी मुखले आपनों का भाग्य भारी कुछ ही ये सार करोगे इसमें इधर उधर आपनों का फेट ये दिस इज़ योर फेट यस यस एक्जेक्टली एक्जेक्टली दिस इज़ योर फेट ना उसका नेट डाइन बेस इस नेट डाइन आप डीप डीप फेट ना ही ओके ओके थैंक यू विथ दिस 
Okay. Thank you, sir.